In this lesson, we continue our walk through physical security by exploring ways to detect intruders. The lighting standards I cover are based on the IES G-1-16 standard available at the ANSI store. You can download the script for this video above or at the end of the video. Before launching a conversation about lighting, it's important to understand how we define lighting levels. We do this with three measures, lumens, foot candles, and lux. A foot candle is the non-metric or British measure of light. It is equivalent to the amount of light on a one foot square area placed perpendicular to a candle one foot away. This is also one lumen. A lumen is the amount of light emitted by a light source. Foot candles measure the amount of light reaching a surface. Lux is the metric measure of the amount of light that reaches a surface. According to dictionary.com, a lux is equivalent to 0 0.0929 foot candles. It's the equivalent of one lumen falling perpendicularly on a one meter square surface. One foot candle equals 10.57 lux. In both of our examples, the direction of the light perp is perpendicular to the surface. Both the lumens of the light source and the angle of the light to the surface or area affects the amount of illumination. Now let's talk about security lighting. Darkness is the friend of intruders. We use lighting to protect people as well as our physical and information resources. Organizations must consider several things when deciding what lighting to use and where, including Shadows caused by structures and landscape obstructions. These include culverts, dishes, and hills. Sometimes, ambient lighting from adjoining sites can also cause shadows. Surface reflection and contrast, and the requirements of cameras and sensor systems. Shadows are a problem for lighting systems. They can be caused by anything that fully or partially blocks light. Man-made or natural landscapes can cause shadowing that must be addressed by lighting design. Sides of structures should provide contrast between intruder and walls. Regardless of the color of clothes worn or other attempts at camouflage, building colors should not support an intruder's concealment efforts. Surfaces should be reflective enough to enable the differentiation between an object and an intruder. In addition to human observation of a site, other controls may require a certain light level for correct operation. This table provides recommended lighting for various applications. These are minimal recommendations. Organizations must take into account their site layouts, structure content sensitivity, ambient lighting, and human safety when designing lighting solutions. Note that lighting changes based on ambient lighting and surface darkness or reflectivity. We begin our discussion of alarms and sensors by looking at cameras. Cameras provide real-time visibility into structures, restricted areas, and across the site. Real-time detection requires that someone, a human, actually watch real-time images provided by cameras placed at the site and building perimeters and at entrances. Security cameras today can also trigger an alarm if motion is detected, bringing human attention to possible intrusions. This requires tuning cameras to eliminate as much noise as possible, such as animals. Cameras don't have to be placed everywhere. If budget is a concern, Consider identifying probable avenues of approach to the perimeter and structures and monitor them with cameras. Now we move to non-visual sensors. We want to detect and intercept the intruder as far from her target as possible. This means alarm sensors begin with the site perimeter. In this example, 
a fence barrier is equipped with a vibration sensor tuned for meaningful movement. We must always assume an intruder will circumvent the perimeter barrier. If site security requires it, we can implement sensors between the perimeter and structures. These include pressure mats, wave pattern detection, and photoelectric or photometric sensors. Pressure mats can be placed on probable avenues of approach and around structures. An intruder simply needs to step on a mat placed beneath sod to set off an alarm. Photometric or photoelectric sensors use light beams. Breaking a light beam sets off an alarm. Wave pattern detection is also used around probable avenues of approach. These sensors use an electromagnetic field. If the characteristics of the field change, humans are notified. Next, we address the building perimeter. All gaps in building barriers should include an alarm sensor. This includes doors and windows accessible with an easily transportable ladder. The security zones within the structure determine where to place sensors and the type of sensors needed. We've already covered pressure mats and photoelectric or photometric sensors that can be placed to detect access into general areas. Acoustic sensors are another option that detect noise at some level above ambient sounds. Sensors like these are helpful when intruders decide to go through walls instead of using doors. Highly classified security zones, like the data center, require door sensors at a minimum, with the use of the other sensors we've discussed when appropriate. Finally, intruder interception requires human involvement at some point. Some organizations can afford full-time, on-site security guards. Even when this is possible, most security guards are not armed and require backup by law enforcement or armed security personnel. When designing delay and detection controls, it's important to understand response times. This depends on where the site is located and the type of response used. For example, in many cases, alarm companies guarantee armed response within minutes of an alarm. This may be faster than police response. However an organization decides to manage response, Management must coordinate with the response teams to minimize missteps when an intruder is detected. Coordination should include scenario planning to deal with the unexpected. As I learned in the Army, plans are effective only until the boots hit the ground. Well, that's it for this lesson. If you have questions, please ask. And until next time, be careful what you click.